This video presentation is made possible by the SLO County Department of Education and the SLO Co-Arts Collaborative. For over a century, the Central Coast of California has been a haven for people from all walks of life. Pioneers, entrepreneurs, farmers, innovators, artists, dreamers. People escaping the city life to find beautiful landscapes, rich culture, seeking prosperity, and most importantly, joy. For a lot of us, we find joy in art, whether we're makers or just lucky enough to enjoy the art of others. Hi, I'm Peter Henry Schroeder. I'm a local documentary filmmaker here in San Luis Obispo County. I invite you to come with me now as we actually get to go talk to some of these artists firsthand and learn about what makes them tick. What are some of the challenges they face and how do they do this on a day-to-day -day basis? Where does their inspiration come from and how do they actually find the joy in their art? What really gives them that creative juice? I think it's, a, it's an interesting idea when we change environments, how does it affect you? you know, I, would, I would have never really thought about environment changing anything I do, it's all cerebral. But it, I think it does. I think it's a very strong influence. You know? Moving to the Pass Robles and the sort of Central Coast experience, it's like, um, it's definitely a step up environmentally. Obviously, there's no traffic, there's no helicopters. You can really think. Everything about your daily routine is different. You know, you have space, you have atmosphere every day. Like when I wake up in the morning and look out the window, m some mornings it's foggy, some mornings the sun's streaming through the house. It's all about the environment here and it's all about the um, atmospheres, right? And so for me, abstraction is, is it's atmospheric. It's, it's completely atmospheric the way I work. I work outside. Um, the weather's fairly consistent, but in the early morning, it gives you a, a myriad of different experiences. You, you can go here from 45 degrees in the morning to 105 in the day, and then 60 at night, you know? It's, it's an awesome studio, you know, being outside in the weather. And so the work I do is heavily dependent on the atmosphere. When I was younger, I worked in Palm Beach at an art gallery. And we had this show, it was at Helander Gallery back in the 80s, and it was an awesome experience. I had um, James Rosenquist and, and, and Robert Rauschenberg in the back seat of the car, and I was driving them around town. And uh, he says to me, he goes, hey, so what do you want to do? Like, what are you going to do after you get done with this gig? You know? And I, and I was like, I, I'm an artist. I'm, I'm training to be an artist. He goes, you want to be an artist? Don't go to art school. It'll destroy you. Too many opinions. And this is coming from Robert Rauschenberg, who, from all intents and purposes, I, he did whatever the hell he wanted to do. And he was a rock star at the time. And um, I took that to heart. I still went to art school. I still went to art school. And I, I learned a lot. But that was always in the back of my mind. And, and, and the truth is, is that after you learn all the rules of the game, I think that real artistry comes into play when you decide to selectively abandon certain rules. It's all about control and chaos, control and chaos. The chaos comes in when you abandon the rules. And I think that's when the work is the most productive and the most inspired. It's really valuable to learn the rules of the game first and then be able to manipulate them to your purposes. When I was in school, abstraction was king and my sense of contrast and rebellion was painting figuratively. I was going back to these Victorian landscapes when everyone else was doing this sort of 
action, automatic drawing, things like this. When we moved to LA in the year 2000, everything was pretty great. I mean, LA was what you think of as LA. It was Tinseltown and palm trees and sun, and it was cool. Los Angeles was a very different experience than growing up in South Florida, right? It was a big city. We had a small house on the freeway, and it was constantly noise. Like, I'd never experienced that before in Florida. Like, helicopters and police cars, and you know, this is cacophony. There was an anxiety being in a city, and I seemed to want to address that in my own psyche, right? I was painting night scenes and dark scenes and all these sort of pastiches of Victorian Gothic. I think what happened was I kind of navigated to a place that was like this sort of darker romantic period that was pre-industrial revolution. Like I tried to imagine a place that was tranquil and always twilight. It was an interesting exploration, um, something completely opposite of what I was familiar with in Florida. The things that were curious to me were the things that were a little more dark, more brooding. Um, in my mind, that seemed relevant in the city of Los Angeles. It was almost safe to talk about the sort of revelation, of the end of the world, right? Because it was really nowhere. And that was, a, that was sort of a fun, sort of lowbrow avenue to explore. As time has progressed, it's almost like that contrast doesn't really exist anymore. Because as the world has gotten crazier and crazier, suddenly I'm like, I don't, this does not feel relevant anymore, you know? I think we need to focus our attention on the light, you know? Collectively, it would be perfect if we could all just say, you know what? We need to, we need to, be, we need to become more positive as human beings. We need to get ourselves out of this. We need to dig our way out of this thing. And it's like, I think that the new work that I'm doing expresses that. Um, I can't really express it in words, so I do it in paint. And that's where, that's where I'm headed now, you know. In nature, when you're not surrounded by skyscrapers and, you know, taxi cabs, um, I think there's, there's a perspective shift, you know. When you're talking about atmospheres, here the lines are indicated by tree limbs, not buildings, you know. You got rectilinear shapes in the city and out here you have um, lines, shapes, color, space, volume, texture and it's all um, it's all natural you know. I don't think I'll ever live in a neighborhood again like to me it's like this was so freeing the revelation of having space finally having room to, you want to walk 50 yards away from your painting and look at it in a different light, you can totally do that. And it's in complete contrast to living in a city. I mean, you know, any artist will tell you they're influenced by their environment, uh, but it's, it's complete contrast for me. And that, I think, is why I'm suddenly drawn to paint completely differently than I have in the past, you know. I do color field abstraction. They call it uh, tough abstraction in some circles. What I, I like to say is I'm, I lay down a series of accidents, right? First, you, you, you employ accident, right? Which is standard fare for any, you know, self-referential painter, right? You employ accident. And then once it's down, you'll see that eh, the composition's a little lacking because it's totally random, right? Nature's random, but somehow it always seems to work. Um, but you lay down the accidents and then you spend the next few hours just correcting 
and, and coaxing and persuading things to happen on the panel, right? So let's say I, I white field it, I throw down a black field, and then, then the color starts coming in. And the contrast becomes the ability to um, take those positive and negative spaces and, and make them work compositionally with color. So, and then after you've introduced these blocks of color, now you start to go, okay, now we need to introduce some drawing. We need to tighten it up with some details, right? Sometimes I get really to the square inch on a 12 foot panel, I'll get to the square inch of minutia with a tiny brush, which seems counterintuitive on a panel so big, but it really helps modulate the viewer's eye from, from the, the small, right, intimate experience of walking right up to the panel and going, wow, why did he do that when there's all this going on? Well, if you look out into the landscape, you know, if you look out into a natural landscape, you're looking off into the distance and go, those little golf balls out there are radar domes. Like, look how tiny they would be in a composition, right? It's, it's natural to go depth of field um, field of focus, and then you come back to these large, almost black trees in the foreground. I mean, that's the natural world, and, that, and it's created seemingly at random, right? We, I don't believe it's random, I believe it's all creation, but in my art, I like to try to mimic that creative instinct, right? I mean, created in God's image right? Mankind. We're the only animal that does this, you know? We're the only creature that tries to mimic what we live in. Um, so for me, that's like hitting it, you know? After all these years of sort of creating these artificial pastiches of reality, it's like what seems abstract in our environment is really very ordered, and I like to create that in my own work. This area I'll keep, this area very, very muddy, which is good for now, good base. And now is where we let nature do the work. So as the sun comes up, the paint starts drying faster and faster. It's gonna be 105 today. And so that's when all the tight details start coming in because as soon as the paint touches the surface, it dries. So you're going to have this nice contrast, this modulation between the background, which is all out of focus, apparently, and then the foreground, which will be all the tighter renderings and gestures, be more like more drawing like. And the lines get sharper and sharper as the temperature goes up. And uh, that's, where, that's where I like to, as a human, employ accident. And as you know, nature progresses throughout the day, you can almost tell at what time of day I laid down what line because of the drying time. And that's the beauty of working outside.
into the minutia. They say God is in the details. A big painting doesn't have to be <clears throat> a big painting in all its areas. Sometimes it's nice to walk up to a very large painting and see the tiniest details. Catching the light on these strokes of paint. It's a contrast in scale. You can have an intimate experience or you can stand across the room and see something entirely different. Okay, I gotta let that dry now. <clears throat> good, looks good. When I'm painting, um, everything in the periphery is gone. You know, it's only about the panel. It becomes it, it becomes its own little universe. So, yeah, sometimes the dog's gotten really used to the fact that I do not mind him when he's underfoot, so he stays out of the way. <laughs> I, I get moving pretty fast sometimes, so. But yeah, like this little microcosm going on in here, it's very atmospheric. You'll see a lot of the blue fields comes from my tradition of uh, like landscape painting and um, stuff I used to do earlier, but um, I think of them as uh, landscapes. The minute I introduce blue, I can't help but seeing sky, and then cloud, and then thicket, you know, like Albrecht Durer's The Great Turf. It's, it's, a, it's almost like a, a growing your own little universe on a panel. And then, then I get to a stage where after the, the landscape is set, then you focus in on an area that is the subject, right? We're pre-subject right now. So when I hang the painting and then I stand in front of it, I can walk 50 yards down the hill and look at it. The other day I was painting a piece and compositionally it all made sense. Um, there was really no pictorial to it. I thought it was all self-referential and then I walked down the hill to, um, I don't know, the chickens were doing something. I walked down the hill and when I looked back up, it was clearly a horse. Like I had, the composition was the silhouette of a horse and so there's the title, you know, like it's one of those things that sometimes you're driving by and you look in a gallery window at night and you think you see an image and then the next day you go back to the gallery and you walk up to it and it's, it, it's a completely random abstract that you've 
invented clarity in your mind. And um, that's what I like to do here. I like to create total chaos and find the order in it and maybe run with it or erase it and do something else. Sometimes art, I remember a professor once telling me, art isn't always about communicating an idea. Sometimes it's about not communicating. And sometimes it's just as much of an experience to look at a painting and can't make any sense of it. You know, we like new. We like things that are constantly new. And to look at something that you don't understand is sometimes more engaging than being able to identify and move on. Um, the most captivating paintings for me is when I don't understand what's happening. And uh, I really like to employ that. And what's wonderful for painting in this manner is everything's a first time, you know? Like when I do more traditional objective painting, when you're painting a landscape with trees and a house and a boat, um, that boat has to look like a boat. <laughs> but here, it's like, it's all new to me as well. This wasn't here 20 minutes ago. And now it is, and now I'm trying to make sense. And now, comes the part where you start to control the composition and riff off of and play with other things. It's like music. It's, I, I, I've never been in a band, but I imagine when you're improvisationally playing, you're constantly feeding off the energy of other people um, and what they're doing, action, reaction. And this is what's happening on the panel for me. So I'm reacting to these lines I laid down 20 minutes ago, and I'm saying, hey, that needs to balance. Let's, let's make that sing with this. The waiting is the worst part. It's like playing chess with yourself. Why? Because you make a move, and then you have to go to the other table and make another move to counter that move, right? Yeah. The color is so interesting to me at this point, and I, and I really feel like it's it's environment, it's, it's the time in my life that I'm at this place where I want to experiment further. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a new experiment. And that's, that's where this work is. It's a new experimental period and I feel like it's, it's just so open, so wide open. And I, I really enjoy doing it and I really enjoy the reaction I've been getting from doing it, you know. To me, it's just a completely different experience than what I was doing before. And I love it. The exploration with the color, it's, it's opening up a whole new series of exploration simultaneously. And I'm ready for that. Like, I'm ready for the experiment of, of color tuning and balance and the whole feeling of uplifting, um, the uplifting experience you get from a white field, right? Whereas before it was very dark, but now it's like, it's completely opposite. It's like, it's like a total mirror contrast of what was going on. And it was fantastic. You know, they loved it and they were really encouraged to see it and it made them feel completely different. And I, I, I have had the same experience. There's that immediacy of going outside and suddenly the, the environment around me makes perfect sense. Where I was always struggling against it. Now it's like it suddenly starts to harmonize with the environment I'm in. And I really love the idea of the light and the, the prism effect of the separation of light. I mean, it all becomes part of the conversation where it was not before. So I'm encouraged by that. I 
I've experienced a lot of things over my career, but I'm always evolving, always progressing, and uh, hopefully always growing. I'm gonna grab some coffee and wait for the sun to do its thing. Maybe wash my hands. Sometimes I see things in the paintings that I, I really don't like. And then once you identify a shape, you're like, oh, I can't unsee it. I have to change it. I have to make that go away in order to see something else. Right now, all I see is a giant ant. I don't like giant ants. I can see how to get rid of it. Yeah, I, obviously I'm blocking this. I'm filling it in in my mind with a black field. And I'm like, oh, that would fix it. But then that does something else. Yeah.